Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking back at physical geography covering deforestation, the second part of our deforestation series on the effects of deforestation. In the previous part, we've really gone through what the causes of deforestation are. So if you've not checked it out, I will leave a link in the description below. Go and watch that video first before you come to this part. And then lastly, in the next part, we'll be covering what the strategies are to actually manage deforestation. Right, deforestation, when you look at the effects, it can be broken up into a local scale. Uh, later, we'll find out that it can be broken up into a regional as well as a global scale. So we'll take a look at what are the various effects that occurs based on scale. Firstly, on a local scale, so we're looking very specifically at a specific area that has been deforested. So we're looking at this immediate area instead of we're ignoring all the peripherals, okay? So in this area itself, when deforestation has taken place, it can lead to an increase in soil erosion and sedimentation. Right, Soil erosion accelerates with deforestation because the absence of vegetation actually acts as a natural barrier and helps to bind the soil together, right? Because of all the roots that it has, it binds the soil together. So when you get rid of these trees, the soil is now very, very loose, right? So it accelerates soil erosion when water actually runs off this surface, right? So as uh, we have learned in soil, when water runs off, be it in the ground or on top, right? It's overland flow or or even just as your true fall blaze flow, when there is no vegetation to actually hold the soil in place, it can cause a lot of your soil to basically uh, dismantle right, and be moved along as well, which leads to further soil erosion. So this leads to an increase in sediments that can be washed into maybe say a nearby river. When you look at the Amazon River, the Amazon rainforest is a very clear example. So it can lead to the sedimentation or silting of rivers. What does sedimentation or silting mean? Basically, there is a piling up of sediments in the river that can cause blockages, can cause uh, certain uh, harmful effects on biodiversity, right? Because these sediments may either block certain passageways in the river, it can uh, harm the life uh, that is also found in the river, right? harm the biodiversity. So sedimentation and silting will affect the quality of water, right? it becomes more filled with sediments and impacts any form of ecosystems. Right? Even the plants, the flora and fauna that is found in the river itself will be impacted. So this is more at the immediate area as with, let's say, either assuming that a river is nearby or if you're looking at just the soil, the effect of the soil itself. Alright, so an increase in flood frequency and magnitude may also be a, another impact. Right? With more overland flow right, due to lesser infiltration and interception loss will result in higher occurrences of fresh floods. Right, due to the higher overland flow. When there are no trees to actually bind the soil together, right, and with more soil erosion, there will be essentially lesser water that's being infiltrated for the original plants which are being uh, which are absorbing all of these water. Right. And uh, a lot of times also because plants are act as very good interception storages, interception loss. This would mean that more water hits the surface, causing greater amounts of water to potentially cause the ground to reach infiltration capacity faster, thereby leading to more overland flow, right? more surface runoff. So this can lead to flash floods. Soil erosion would create high amounts of sediments in the river, which results in silting. So it's the same point, right? but silting in this case can also cause greater flood potential. Right? When there is, you just think about a bucket of water, Right, that is completely empty versus one that you just throw a bunch of rocks and dirt into, definitely with the greater amount of mass and materials that have been thrown in, the second bucket is definitely bound to overflow more easily right? because of all of these materials that have been thrown in. So likewise, still thing will actually cause more um, or it will increase the chances of flooding in the nearby rivers. The displacement of indigenous communities is a social impact that can come as a result of deforestation. So for those of you guys who are unaware, a lot of rainforests, a lot of forests in general, tropical rainforests, are home to a lot of 
communities, right? Some of them are more indigenous, right? They are not exactly say they basically have their own communities and societies. So when you actually clear up these forests to open up these areas for mainland people, right, for commercial purposes, the access to forest resources by your indigenous people are ignored. For instance, some of them may use some of these forests as a form of shelter. Some of them may use it as a form of um, their own sustenance, right? Farming and all to get by. So when you clear up these forests, you're basically destroying their homes. Right? You're destroying the areas that they could actually um, or are sentimental and it's an area feasible for them to live in. Right? So this results in a destruction of traditional lifestyles. Uh, customs, homes, infrastructure for development such as roads, commercial buildings when they are actually taken over instead. So this is a form of social injustice, not something that sustainable development is out to um, eradicate. Right? It is definitely something they want to eradicate. So this is not something that will be helpful at all Right? when we pursue deforestation for commercial reasons. The inherent trade-off is that people who potentially live in the area will have to be evicted, right? They will have to be displaced, which ultimately is a negative for society. All right, so we look at the regional or we call it national scale, where right? it depends on how you want to classify it. So we look at some of the impacts on a national scale. Firstly, a loss of natural resource, right? This is most probably one of the most self-explanatory points. When you cut down forests, you cut down trees, you are getting rid of a valuable finite resource that unfortunately is gone, right? And this takes years and years for us to try and replenish. So rampant deforestation in the country can deplete its only source of natural resource, right? Some countries only have forests as their one natural resource. Right? This means that if we destroy it for the sake of capitalism, right, it in essence basically gets rid of potentially one of their comparative advantages or potentially an area that um or a resource that is finite for them, right, and for the world as well. So indirect effects would be radiation that is absorbed by the ground will increase and this causes an increase in surface temperature. So this is all part of what we learn in albedo. Uh, for those of you guys who are curious, albedo, you can go and search it up. It's how much of radiation is reflected. Look at soy, right? Soy can actually uh, absorb more radiation, right? This can lead to an overall increase in your surface temperatures. So this is an indirect effect that has on climate change. Those of you, say, those of you guys looking to write synoptic links, this can be an area for a synoptic link, right? Soy erosion and the loss of forest means that there could be higher surface temperatures when more radiation is directly absorbed by the soil instead of by the vegetation. Regional climate change, so like we had just mentioned, right, but we look at other effects here. So deforestation can impact regional climate change, including feedback effects. So rainforest soil that loses fertility very quickly um, after deforestation is usually quite a common feature, right, because your soil that has just... Um, you know, lost all its trees, now it doesn't really have much nutrients or anything that is fueling it, right? And with the sunlight radiation that comes straight down, it can lead to desert, um, this, this term called desertification, which is basically when the whole area starts to become very, very dry, becomes very, very um, radiated in a certain sense, and the degradation of soil quality. Naturally, soil fertility, when it goes down, it means that the quality of soil also will decrease. So for you to want to pursue, let's say, reforestation later on, to grow new trees will be even tougher than before. Right? So this is why we try as far as possible not to cut down trees, because when you cut it down, it has a lot of negative side effects that can be very hard to combat in the long run. All right, now we look at the global scale. Let's look at what are some of the global scale effects, right? What does uh, deforestation in one area have on the rest of the world? So definitely, it is the whole idea of global warming and climate change, which is what um, our syllabus, uh, sustainable development, right, actually revolves around, right? This whole idea of climate change. So lesser forest equates to an increase in atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases. We all know that trees absorb a certain gas, right? And this gas is none other than carbon dioxide. 
So naturally, if we're going to cut down a lot of trees, what's going to happen is that there won't be enough trees to absorb the high emissions of carbon dioxide that is produced by a lot of factories a day. But in fact, you think about it, we are being counterproductive when we actually cut down these trees and build factories instead. Right? Not only are we pre- we we are not only are we reducing the amount of carbon dioxide that can potentially be absorbed, but we are actually increasing it, right, with these factories that produce even more greenhouse gas emissions. So it causes this huge, huge imbalance in these greenhouse gas emissions, which can cause a net increase in your global mean temperatures. Right? Because global uh sorry, because greenhouse gases um they can actually trap a lot of heat. Right, so trees that are deforested are also going to release stored carbon. A lot of these trees, when they absorb carbon dioxide, a lot of them store it before transpiration or before other um, um, processes take place. So the reduction in photosynthesis along with this release in stored carbon overall would cause a lot of carbon dioxide to be present in the atmosphere, which penultimately would definitely, I mean, doesn't even sound good to you, does it, right? has a very, very negative consequence on climate change and global warming as a whole. So that is really all you need to know for the effects or the impacts of deforestation. So try and get a bit of um, each aspect, right? You look at environmental, you look at social, you look at economic. I know we didn't really talk about economic here, but you can look at how deforestation can lead to loss of natural resource, which could be... um, or either that potentially with TNCs coming in with um, new factories being set up, right? That can be an economic e- effect that could be somewhat positive. But ultimately, you realize that the effects of deforestation is largely negative, right? So in, in the real world, um, it is very true, right? Deforestation is, I mean, we both know it, right? That we, as far as possible, should not be cutting all of these forests off, right? Because the repercussions and the side effects, the negative side effects that arise is very, very, very um, deadly to a certain extent, right? And it can last for the long term, right? So that's why we need to implement certain strategies that can aim to manage deforestation, right? There's no way we can completely eradicate deforestation. If not, tomorrow you don't have to use paper anymore, right? You don't have to have wooden furniture or all of these kind of things. So it's not possible to fully eradicate, but there there are definitely strategies that can be used to manage all of our forests, right? And manage the rate at which deforestation occurs. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at that specifically. And do be sure to subscribe, right? And stay tuned for that next part. So if you did enjoy this video and you did learn something, before that, let's go through the exam requirements. I just forgot. Right, you just need to be able to explain and discuss the effects of deforestation, right? Very, very simple. We've already gone through the, all the explanations. So when it comes to discussing, right, very simple. Way using evaluation elements, right? Way the effects, which effects do you think are the most pertinent or the most potent, right? And then weigh them accordingly. Right, so we'll be covering more of this uh, kind of questions in our YouTube memberships and Patreon. So be sure to subscribe and join those as well if you are interested. Um, if not, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. And be sure to subscribe as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can always leave in the comment section below and I'll answer them as always. If not, I'll see you guys in the next part, the next video very, very soon. And yes, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.